AMD has launched its new Zen 5 architecture, which takes full advantage of a die shrink from TSMC's 5 nanometer down to 4 nanometer. This week we have the Ryzen 5 9600X and the Ryzen 7 9700X. Next week we'll have the two Ryzen 9s. We suggest you take a look at our review of the Ryzen 5 9600X where you can learn more about the Zen 5 architecture, but today it's the turn of the Ryzen 7 9700X. The headline news with the new Ryzen 7 is that it has the same 65 watt TDP as the new Ryzen 5. That translates to 88 watt socket power under load, but the idea of a Ryzen 7 running at the same power draw as Ryzen 5? That sounds exciting. The question of course is how well it performs. It's Wednesday the 7th of August and KitGuru's review of the Ryzen 5 9600X has just gone live. Our review of this Ryzen 7 9700X will go live tomorrow on Thursday once I finish the video. We'd always intended separating these videos. However, this means I had an opportunity to look at a couple of other reviews because the headlines at the moment look a bit grim. For example, we have Nick from Gear Seekers. We can draw a few conclusions for the AMD Ryzen 7 9700X. First of all, it's new, and new is always better, right? Wrong. And also Steve from Hardware Unboxed. Now here's a look at the Cinebench multi-core performance, and I'm not sure what to make of this. The 9700X is a whole 2% faster than the 7700X in this test. And also Steve from Gamers Nexus. The most positive thing about this CPU is power efficiency. And the second most positive thing about it is, even though I've looked everywhere, I can't find the word Intel anywhere on the box. There's a considerable body of opinion that dislikes this processor. Plus there are various others who rather like it. In other words, opinion is divided. And I think the explanation is quite straightforward. So I'm gonna cover that before I get on with this review. And it is simply this. I would not in a thousand years consider taking a Zen 4 socket AM5 processor and upgrading to either of these parts. That would seem to be nuts. You take the current, let's get the model codes correct, Ryzen 5 7600X or Ryzen 7 7700X, clearly it's a relatively new PC, and you throw that processor away and you install one of these. Why would you do that? I think it's much more likely that these parts are intended for somebody who's buying a new PC or possibly building one themselves, but they haven't bought a PC in three, four, maybe five years. And if they build a PC or buy a PC in late 2024 using Zen 5, rather than the Zen 4 part they'd have got in early 2024, they're gonna get very similar performance with much less power draw and much less heat. And that's a win. So the drop in replacement, this part doesn't make a lot of sense to me. However, in its own right, it looks highly promising. This is a completely different picture, however, to Ryzen 9. I can imagine someone who's built a Zen 4 socket AM5, Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7, and then they consider dropping in the new Ryzen 9s when they come out next week. That might be a thing. I'll have to consider that when I do my reviews. But for now, let's get on with my review of the Ryzen 7 9700X. In the course of our briefing in Los Angeles with AMD, we were told a great many details about the Zen 5 architecture. The upshot, which is the important thing, is that Zen 5 offers significant improvements over Zen 4, which is just as well, because it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have a new architecture that didn't offer an improvement over the previous architecture. But let's take a look at the bigger picture. This is Zen 5, the fifth incarnation of Zen, but there have actually been six incarnations. We've had Zen, then we had a die shrink to Zen Plus, then we had Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4, and now Zen 5. Let's take a look at pricing. The new Zen 5 Ryzen 7 9700X is launching at 359 US dollars. That equates to 340 pounds, including VAT in the UK. For comparison, the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7700X launched at $399 in September 2022, 
which cost us Brits £420, including VAT. Today you can buy the Ryzen 7 7700X for £290, including VAT. So depending on your point of view, the new Zen 5 Ryzen 7 is either £80 cheaper than the Zen 4 model, or it currently sells at a premium of £50. Whichever way you look at it, the downward drift of Zen 4 prices over time strikes us as good news for the customer. Let's take a look at how the various Ryzen 7s perform, starting with Ryzen 7 2700X. This is Zen Plus on 12 nanometer, and we can see here in Cinebench R23, it's running at 3.9 gigahertz all cores and pulling 139 watts. Next up, we have Zen 2 Ryzen 7 3700X, AMD move from Global Foundries to TSMC. This processor's fabbed on seven nanometer. You can see it running at the same 3.9 gigahertz, but the power draw has dropped significantly to 90 watts. Zen 3 Ryzen 7 5800X, also on 7 nanometer, the power draw has increased hugely to 145 watts, but the clock speed has also climbed to 4.55 gigahertz. Then we move on to Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7700X. This has a die shrink to 5 nanometers, a very small power dip to 140 watts, and a clock speed of 5.1 gigahertz. You can see here that AMD is chasing Intel's clock speeds. And then we move on to the new Zen 5 Ryzen 7 9700X on TSMC 4 nanometer. Running on auto, it draws a mere 88 watts and the clock speed has dropped back from the previous generation to 4.7 gigahertz. However, if we use Ryzen Master to overclock the Ryzen 7 9700X, we can increase the speed to 5.25 gigahertz at 157 watts. And now let's look at a chart of those test results, the various Ryzen 7s in Cinebench R23. And what we see is that the new Zen 5 model, essentially you can either have the same performance as Zen 4 for much less power, or you can have far better performance at very similar power levels. Those Cinebench R23 results might not surprise you. After all, that is a test of pure CPU grunt. But what happens if we run through the same processes again, and this time look at a game? We're using Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p on Ultra preset, and according to the benchmark, the graphics card is working hard, but each of the processors is barely ticking over, running at a very few percent of total load. As we work through the Zen Plus, Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4, Zen 5 on auto, and then Zen 5 overclocked, what do we see? At the bottom of the stack, the Zen Plus 2700X runs at an average of 76 FPS, the Zen 2 at 91 FPS, the Zen 3 at 127 FPS, the Zen 4 at 153 FPS, the new Zen 5 on auto 168 FPS, and the overclocked Zen 5 bizarrely runs slower at 161 FPS. And all those processors are running on the same graphics card, this Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC 16 Gigabyte. We're using two different platforms. The AM4 platform runs on DDR4 memory. This AM5 runs on DDR5. But still, those are huge differences. And remember, the gaming benchmark suggests the CPU is doing almost no work. I was so keen to show you how the Ryzen 7 behaves that I haven't discussed the various test setups. We've got three platforms for Intel LGA 1700, Core i5 and Core i7. I'm using this Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Master X motherboard. For AMD AM4, so that's Ryzen's 2000, 3000 and 5000. I have this Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard and that has some Corsair Vengeance LPX memory, 3600 megahertz for the Zen 3 processors, and then I have to slow it down to 3200 for Zen 2 and Zen Plus. For socket AM5, I have this MSI Meg X670E Ace. The DDR5 memory is this G-Skill Trident Z Neo, so that supports Expo as well as XMP. It's rated at DDR5 6000, and I've used the same memory on both the AMD M5 and also on Intel. Graphics card, as previously mentioned, is common to all the platforms. That's a Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4080 Gaming OC. CPU cooler, also common to all the platforms. Fantex Glacier 1360 D30. You'll note the fans are extra thick, 30 mil units. And the power supply, 
is also common to all the platforms. It's a Seasonic PX1600. That's a prime unit and it's rated at 1600 watts and ATX3. And now we can dive in and look at the benchmark results. Starting with Cinebench 2024 multi-core. At the top of the chart with a healthy lead is the Intel Core i7-14700K. Directly behind that we have a 12-core Zen 4 and then a 16-core Zen 3. A couple of places below that we have the Ryzen 7 9700X overclocked, but you have to look slightly further down for the Ryzen 7 9700X on auto, and the score is almost exactly the same as the Ryzen 7 7700X, i.e. the Zen 4 part. The significant point here is the new Ryzen 7 9700X is using much less power to achieve the same result. Geekbench 6 Multicore, third from the top we have the new Ryzen 7 9700X overclocked. A couple of places below that we have that same processor on auto. Between those two results you'll notice the Core i5-14600K. Cinebench R23 Multicore, pure grunt at the top of the chart from the same three processors we saw in Cinebench 2024. Then we have the Core i5 and then we come to the new Ryzen 7 9700X. Just below that, a tiny fraction behind, the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7700X. Power consumption. How much power do these processors require? On stock clocks, the Ryzen 7 9700X takes 88 watts under load, which is absolutely great. Overclock it, goes up to 157. To my eyes, 88 looks better than 157. For the next chart, we take the result in Cinebench R23 Multicore and divide it by the watts required to get that result. And we can see how many points you get per watt. Clear away at the top of the chart, Ryzen 7 9700X. Close behind that, Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, i.e. the Zen 4 part. You have to go all the way down to the middle of the chart to find the Ryzen 7 7700X. CPU temperature under full load using that chunky Fantex Glacier 1 AIO cooler. On auto settings the Ryzen 7 9700X sits at 57 degrees and that's with an ambient of 25. On the other hand if you overclock it it'll go up to 85 and that's a huge difference. Cinebench R23 single core. Clear away at the top of the chart, it's the new Ryzen 7 9700X. Blender 4.2 Classroom. At the top of the chart, it's those same three processors we saw before. And then we come to the Ryzen 7 9700X. When we look at the auto settings for Ryzen 7 9700X, we see it only just beats the Ryzen 7 7700X. 7-zip version 24. The Ryzen 7 9700X does perfectly well but only beats the Ryzen 7 7700X by a tiny margin. ADA64 memory bandwidth is all about the memory. Of course, we're using DDR5-6000, and as a result, the Ryzen 7 9700X is slap in the middle of the chart. 3D Mark Time Spy. This is the full result, so it includes the graphics element, and that's a huge part of this benchmark. Close to the top of the chart, we have the new Ryzen 7 9700X. The Ryzen 7 7700X is only a short distance behind. And then we move on to gaming. In Avatar Frontiers of Pandora 1440, the results are very close. The new Ryzen 7 9700X does well, but there's very little to separate any of the CPUs. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1080. Again, all the processors are very close together, but the win goes to the overclocked Ryzen 7 9700X. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1440. Things spread out a bit here. It's curious to note the Ryzen 7 9700X on auto beats the overclocked version of the processor but the Ryzen 7 7700X is only a short distance behind. And it's the same story in Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p. Good results from the Ryzen 7, but also from the Zen 4 Ryzen 7. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440. It's a dead heat at the top of the chart between the overclocked Ryzen 7 9700X and the Ryzen 5 9600X. Zen 5 for the win. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080. The win is taken by the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which we expected to do better in these benchmarks. Close behind that, the Ryzen 7 9700X. Total Warfare at 1440p. 
top of the chart it's the Ryzen 7 9700X on auto then the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and then a tiny distance behind the Ryzen 7 9700X overclocked and Total War Pharaoh at 1080p top of the chart Ryzen 7 7800X 3D right behind that we have the Ryzen 7 9700X let's get to my conclusions about the Ryzen 7 9700X I'm going to swim against the tide I think it's pretty good. I'm also going to say this, if there are reviewers who don't like this Ryzen 7 or indeed don't like the Ryzen 5, that's fine. However, to write off Zen 5 as a whole I think is premature. After all, to the best of my knowledge, none of us have yet worked with the 12 and 16 cores. And until you have a view on those, how can you possibly have a view on the architecture as a whole? Perhaps they're good, perhaps they're not good. Personally, I hold out great hope for the 16 core in particular, and then when the inevitable 3D parts come along, I think they should be something special. But that lies in the future. Right now, Ryzen 7 9700X. Pros and cons. The pros, the operating temperature is great on auto settings, and the 65 watt TDP, 88 watt socket power are just simply phenomenal. The launch of Zen 5 means that the Ryzen 7 7700X is really cheap at the moment. So if you're not fussed about saving 50 watts under load and you want to save a bit of cash, well, go down that route instead. Cons, the negative points. Gaming performance of this processor is very similar to the aforementioned Ryzen 7 7700X. So I can understand why some people are disappointed. As we've said before, and we're going to say again, you should wait until the inevitable 3D parts drop before you make a buying decision. That's if you're a gamer. On the other hand, if you want more performance, you should wait until the Ryzen 9 parts drop. Basically, wait. And finally, the lower clock speeds of the Zen 5 parts that we've seen so far, the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7, they look very peculiar compared to Zen 4. It makes sense to me because we're going for low power and higher efficiency, but nonetheless, a reduced clock speed just sounds plain strange. Remember, we're on TikTok and it's kickguru.net on the web. I'm going to give this processor an 8 out of 10 and a worth buying.